Hi, welcome to Fine Tuning, School of Fine Tuning, and we're, today we're going to do a muscles class. We're going to do a naming of all the muscles, um, so not the system theory, but we're just going to go through and name some muscles, just so that if you need to revise them, you can hear them said. So I'm just sitting down to begin with so that I can show you a bit of face muscles. <clears throat> so there's lots of, there's, if you look at a, an intricate uh, diagram labelling of the muscles, there are many, many more that I'm going to say through today. Um, there are so many detailed ones, so if you're, if you're very experienced with your muscles and you're sitting there going, you haven't done that one, you haven't done that one, it's because we're doing an overview of muscles that I feel that when we're doing um, our level three study, that we know which muscles and you have a, a sort of good understanding of the muscular uh, names and uh, where they are, location. So let's begin. Let's begin with uh, a few facial muscles. So we've got frontalis, temporalis, occipitalis at the back. Okay, we've got zygomaticus. There's the masseter muscle. There's rosorius, triangularis, and there's also the buccinator here. There's uh, abicularis oculi and abicularis oris. There's nasalis, mentalis. Okay, so here we've got sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid goes from the sternum through to the clavicle and up to the mastoid process. And did I say the masseter? I did say the masseter. The masseter is really important in the face. That's the chewing, the grinding and clenching. So here we've got the masseter muscle as well. <clears throat> so sternocleidomastoid. There's the uh, pterygoid and platysma here. And then we've got the pectoralis. Now the pectoralis major and minor, the pectoris minor, the pectoris major are huge. Sort of the pecs, if you like. So pecs. And then we have got, actually got some of the trapezius that wraps over the top here. So the trapezius does actually present and attach onto the clavicle. So we've got that there as well. Yep, we've got the deltoid. We've got biceps and triceps and brachialis. We've got coracobrachialis. And then we've got the extensors and the flexors. So the flexors flex and the extensors extend. So here we've got the flexors and here we've got the extensors. So we've got the extensors ulnaris, extensors radialis, and extensors digitorum. But they're commonly known really as the flexors and extensors. Extensors. Okay, I'm going to stand now. So what, what's next? Let me just reference my book so I don't forget anything that I wanted to share with you. Oh, we've also got the, um, the splenius capitus uh, and the scalenes as well, which come through the neck. They're more posterior. Um, and the um, splenius capitus that's also in the neck. So the, the muscles are actually layered so that um, some, when I'm pointing to a muscle, it might be that they are superficial. Um, or they might be deep. So I'll try and describe what's superficial and deep. The pectorals are superficial. And then underneath the, uh, the pectoralis, we've got the intercostal muscles. We've got the exterior intercostals, which are between the rib cage externally. And then we've got the interior intercostals. And they're between the rib cage and they allow, sorry, I don't need to shout because I'm wearing the microphone. Um, <clears throat> The internal intercostals are actually internally and they allow for expansion of the rib cage and the contraction and relaxing of the rib cage. 
We've also got the diaphragm internally as well, which is the dome-shaped organ that separates the uh, lung chest cavity to the abdominal cavity. Okay, so let's move forward then onto um, the, pec the uh, abdominal muscles. We've got um, rectus abdominis, which is what we commonly know as the six pack, but it's more than six because it goes right down into the pubic area. It's more like uh, eight or 10, eight, eight. And then we've got the um, external obliques, the obliques here. We've got the transverse abdominis or transversus abdominis here and the obliques. And then we move into the legs, uh, the psoas muscle as well. The psoas, psoas you, can't, you can't palpate psoas because psoas attaches very deeply into uh, the lower spine and passes through the pelvic cavity onto the, on, into the uh, femur. It's, uh, it's, you can't touch it, but psoas is inside. So we've got the quads. And with the quads, we've got the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, and rectus femoris. We've also got the adductor muscles, the adductors on the inside here. We've got um, sartorius, and the sartorius muscle travels uh, laterally to medial. And we've got tensor fascia lata at the top. And what else do I need to tell you here? And the gracilis, yeah, that travels all medially down the inner leg. So around the patella, there's lots of patella ligaments. And then we've got tibialis anterior on the lateral side of the lower leg. That's tibialis anterior. And then wrapping round here, we have soleus and the gastrocnemius that move from posteriorly to anteriorly. And then we've also got um, peroneus longus laterally. Let me just check anything I've missed out. Peroneus longus laterally. And yeah, we've got all of that here. Amazing. So we've also got the flexors, the flexor digitorum and the flexor hallucius longus in the foot. Let's move posteriorly now. And I might have to show you on a diagram because I've only got myself here. Nobody would help me be my model from upstairs. So at the back, we've got superficially the very large kite shaped muscle called the trapezius and the trapezius comes from the occipital ridge and comes out to the um, edge of the acromion process and comes over to the clavicle and then comes down mid thoracic. So we've got this big kite shaped muscle called the trapezius and that covers a lot of muscles. So in between the scapula and the spine and scapula, we've got the rhomboids. We've got rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. And then we've got teres major and teres minor, uh, infraspinatus and supraspinatus. And these are all a little group that cover the shoulder blade and the scapula. So I'm going to bring this in so I can show you here. You've got uh, teres major, teres minor, uh, supraspinatus and infraspinatus, all these here. Yeah. And there, of course, this is the trapezius that comes down mid thoracic and covers. We've got the latissimus dorsi here. The latissimus dorsi covers all the back. A huge muscle that covers all of the side of the back or the flank of the back. And then either side of the spine, we've got the erector spinae, the erector spinae group. It's made up of group of muscles called the long, longissimus thoracis, intercostalis thoracis. Uh, and these commonly, uh, there's a big group called the erector spinae muscle. We've also got the serratus anterior, which are the nice winged muscles here at the side, just under the axillary area. This is serratus anterior. 
So deep as well, we've got quadratus lumborum. These are deep muscles. Um, and then let me just see, we've also got, yep, we've got the external obliques again here at the waist. And they sort of go, they wrap, they wrap around. Okay, so we've got the piriformis muscle. The piriformis muscle, again, is, is quite, is, is deep into the glute, under the glute. It goes from the edge of sacrum to the outer trochanter of femur. We've got this piriformis muscle. And then, we, of course, we've got the glutes. I'm not going to show you my glutes, but we do have glutes. We have gluteus maximus, which is the largest, gluteus minimus and gluteus medius at the side. OK, and then we come into the hamstrings. The hamstrings are made up of three branches. We have semimembranosus, semitendinosus and biceps femoris. Semimembranosus, semitendinosus, biceps from femoris. Um, OK, just having a quick look. See if there's anything. We've also got the iliotibial band or the iliotibial tract that goes from the ilium down to the tibia. This is more of a fibrous strap per se than a muscle. But it's called the IT band or the iliotibial band. And like I said at the top here, the tensor fascia lata, on, on, sometimes called the TFL. Okay, so we've got the popliteal fossa at the back after, uh, below the hamstrings, and then we've got the um, the two bellies of the gastrocnemius gastrocnemius and that's the calf muscle there that can be very defined if you're lucky and we've got gastrocnemius and then we have soleus and the soleus wraps round more medially than anything and then again we've got peroneus longus that we've talked about that also goes laterally so gastrocnemius, soleus, peroneus longus. And then, of course, we've got the Achilles tendon. And the Achilles tendon, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, I've got my bum in your face, but we've got the Achilles tendon here that is a tendon attachment from the gastrocnemius that wraps right underneath the calcaneus heel bone. I think that will do. Um, yeah, I'm just having a look here. Some of them, oh, the levator scapula. I think the levator scapula is awesome uh, for us to know. And the levator scapula, let me see if we've got a picture of levator scapula. Yeah, because that attaches to the top of the scapula and up into the occipital ridge. Um, the trapezius actually starts off at the top of the, the cervical, vert cervical vertebrae and then the levator scapula comes up into the occipital uh, ridge and then attaches to the top of the scapula. So um, that's one of the, the key tension areas, this levator scapula muscle. This all, this all round here is levator scapula, splenius capitis, um, sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, rhomboid, uh, major. These are all the top of, of the neck and the shoulder that cause a lot of tension for us. And you can see it all attaches into either the upper cervical vertebrae or indeed the occipital ridge. So, uh, yeah. I think that will do nicely. OK, I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please do get in touch.